Even if the players in Major League Baseball today are bigger, faster and are more skilled than their predecessors, the sport of baseball as a whole has declined throughout the years. The games take up too much time, the batters are taking far too many pitches and the pitchers are taking an interminable amount of time to throw them. A lot has changed over the year in this game. Let us look closer into the facts on how to save baseball. Over the past half century, the length of a typical nine-inning Major League Baseball game has increased from approximately two hours and 25 minutes to over three hours, making it the sport with the longest average length among the major North American sports leagues. Creators and front offices are in agreement that the pace of play needs to be accelerated for baseball to have any chance in attracting the attention of younger fans. To their credit, the league is doing its best to alleviate this concerning development by experimenting with measures such as pitch clocks, limiting the number of bullpen moves, and introducing automatic intentional walks. Increase the pace of the game the length of baseball games is universally acknowledged to be unacceptable. We are not going to advocate doing away with the seventh inning stretch. Still, there are two other ideas that we have that might make a significant impact. Enforce the pitch clock. Implementing the pitch clock would be beneficial in solving issues. Hitters would be required to remain in the batter's box, which frees the pitchers from the need to perform the stupid routines that lengthen the time between pitches. Both players are required to keep the action moving forward if the rule is written in such a way that the pitcher is required to throw the pitch regardless of whether or not the batter is set. There is little doubt that this has the potential to quickly cut 30 minutes off the length of the game, and the regulation for the MLB actually calls for a pitch clock that lasts 12 seconds. The umpires must begin strictly enforcing this regulation, make it possible for teams to communicate an intentional walk, Create a means for a catcher or pitcher to signal to the home plate umpire that they are issuing an intentional walk and make it possible for them to do so with a single pitch. Driveline and strikeout. This man is the actual issue with Major League Baseball as it is today. The creator of Driveline Baseball, a Seattle-based biomechanics lab with clients that includes Major League Aces, is Kyle Bodie. According to Bodie, Driveline's objective is data-driven player development. However, to those in the baseball world, Driveline is more well-known as the site where pitchers disappear for the winter and return the following spring with a few extra ticks in their fastballs. The ability of Carl Bodie, a former collegiate pitcher who is now a software developer for Microsoft, to combine cutting-edge analytics with advanced training methods to achieve maximum efficiency, or in other words, to use technology to help pitchers throw harder, is what makes him special. The typical pitcher who throws at least 85 miles per hour will gain 2 to 3 miles per hour after training at driveline. Some will even see velocity increases reaching double digits. OK, so you're probably wondering why this one guy is such a problem for baseball. To be clear, we have no issue with what Carl Bodie or the rest of the team at Driveline are doing. This video isn't meant to be some screed about how analytics are ruining baseball, or how things would be so much better if we went back to the days when the game was run by real men and not Ivy League nerds. Let's travel back to the year 2008. When the first Twilight movie had just been released, everyone was sporting ridiculous large belts, and a young Ubaldo Jimenez was dominating the mob, with a league-leading average fastball velocity of 96 miles per hour. Fast forward to the present, when the title is held by Mets ace Jacob de Grom, whose average fastball clocks in at a blistering 98.7 miles per hour. And if Jimenez were fewer balls in play, more home runs and more strikeouts, according to internal MLB surveys, fans particularly like doubles, triples and stolen bases. What they detest most is downtime. So if pitchers' rapid advancements are leading to fewer balls being put in play, which is precisely what fans don't want to see, what can be done to buck this trend? It is not like we can just make the visuals worse. But what if we told you that there was a way to successfully counteract the negative effects of power pitchers and increase balls in play? Francis Richter endorsed a plan to restore the game of baseball to high favor in November of 1892. In years prior, offensive output had plummeted due to pitchers like Cy Young. They were throwing the ball harder than ever before. 
Richter explained the benefits of the plan, which included clean, hard batting, baser running and more swing dash and went to delight the spectators. When the National League voted to implement this new regulation less than four months later, the strikeout rate was reduced by 38, the batting average rose by 35 points and the number of outs increased by 92 points. We believe that if the pitcher's mound were moved back by only a few feet, Major League Baseball would be able to significantly lower strikeout rates and create a friendlier environment for the balls in play that the fans so desperately crave. We imagine that many of you are already familiar with the rule change, which increased the distance from the mound to the plate by 5 feet to the 60 feet 6 inches that we know today. The first thing we need to consider is perceived velocity. When a 90 mile per hour fastball is released, a batter has roughly 250 milliseconds to start his swing. Now consider that the difference between the hit and the foul ball is only 7 milliseconds and we can start to understand why they say hi to the ball. In addition, pitchers are now taller and more flexible than ever before, so the average mob pitch is actually released less than 54 and a half feet from the home plate. If the mound were to be moved back by two feet, a 95 mile per hour pitch would have the same flight as a 91.7 mile per hour pitch at the current distance. This would require 15 more milliseconds of travel time and an increase in observation time, just enough to counteract the velocity gap making home runs more difficult to hit. However, experts have argued that the additional time for the hitter to observe the pitch will negate any additional breaking ball movement that might help pitchers. Some analysts have expressed concerns that moving the mound back would give breaking pitches more time to move, leading to increased walks and strikeouts, the opposite of the intended effect. Major League Baseball approached Glenn Fleissig, the research director at the American Sports Medicine Institute, in January 2019 to provide an answer to that very question. Major League pitchers are fine-tuned machines who have been trained to throw from 60 feet 6 inches since they were teenagers, and suddenly changing that distance results in an increased chance of injury. Moving the mound backwards is unlikely to have a significant impact on pitching mechanics and injury risk, which tracked the biomechanics of pitchers as they threw from three different distances. On the contrary, it might keep players healthy by giving pitchers more time to defend against comebackers and reducing the force with which batters are hit. However, no claims have been made about the potential advantages of moving the mound backwards. In the latter half of the 20th century, there was growing concern that softball, baseball's closest relative, had become boring due to the dominance of pitching. To address this, the NCAA decided to move the mound from 40 feet to 43 feet in 1987. In February of this year, a team at Driveline conducted their own experiment on the effects of moving the mound back. A group of nine college hitters faced 426 pitches from a pitching machine placed 57 feet from the home plate instead of the usual 55. The move was successful in bringing about a more offensive friendly environment. They discovered a 3.1% rise in swing rate, a 4.8% increase in contact rate, and a 16.8% increase in hard hits. Of course, none of these findings can be applied to the Major League Diamond, but we will soon have an answer for that as well. For the first time ever, the mob is collaborating with the Atlantic League to test shifting the pitcher's rubber back one foot starting this summer. By doing so, we will be able to determine the precise consequences of moving the pitcher's mound back in a competitive in-game setting. The final argument against this proposal, which we are sure will be raised by many, is that 60 feet and 6 inches is one of the most famous numbers in sports, and changing it would be considered blasphemy by any self-respecting baseball fan. It would make sense for the pitcher's mound, the point where every single play begins, to be placed in the exact center of the diamond because baseball is a symmetrical three strikes to an out, three outs to an inning, nine innings to a game. Each base is exactly 90 feet away, forming a perfect square. However, for whatever reason, the pitcher's mound is set slightly in front of the actual center of the field, completely offending the symmetry. What do you think of the video? Let us know in the comments section below. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to like it and hit that subscribe button before you go. Thanks for watching.